What's up? What's up? Welcome to another episode of All Over Voice Over with Kip VH. I'm your host, Kip VH, and I am overjoyed to uh, welcome my my friend, my director, um, uh, really a, a creative collaborator on on Crude's Family Tree. Um, thrilled that she's here. One of the most sought after uh, directors and, and voice actors in town. Uh, Serena Irwin is here. Serena, thank you so much for joining me. It's amazing to get a chance kidding? to talk to you. I, I can't believe we get the opportunity to actually not be in session and get to hang out. Like I know. This is us hanging out. I'm this is so us. Excited. It's the best part because, I mean, being in session is amazing, but it's also like, you know, every time we'd start talking VR or whatever, it's like we don't have the time. This is... This is, this is and so... yet, and yet, it's so necessary. I mean, especially hmm. like going through, essentially, two years of not being able to be in person with people. Yeah. It just felt like such a necessary thing to have a little bit of space in those record sessions where we could actually have a humane exchange that was beyond yeah. the script that we were gonna, you know, attend to. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, like it's it's really easy to you know, I mean. You've been in it. You've been in these sessions where you go in and you're winding the watch real tight. And it's like, you know, get in, read the words and and then make room for the next person to come in. And there's something about this, the nature of what we've, I mean, in a way, the nature of what we're doing with animation too. Like there's something that there's a, a different component to this kind of work that requires a greater sense of collaboration in some reason. I don't know necessarily greater, but like, the, there, and this is not to disparage people working in the commercial, like the commercial producers, but the aspect of creating animation specifically is we're all in like this sense of play and creating this world together that has a very different texture and component to it than than it does when you're working on you know some spots for Dr. Scholl's or whatever. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I cannot speak to to working on those kinds of spots, but I can say that. Um, it, it really, it feels like, especially, and what was so wonderful about Crudes is we've got these, this core group that is the beginning and ending really of what we're gonna be playing with. And so beyond uh, tending to the words and the stories, we have to also know each other, Yeah. get to know each other in a different way. I mean, I feel like that across the board for working working in this in this zone and really i mean it's just you gotta have a relationship for me as a director a relationship with the actors that feels um like fun and safe and yeah. um free and so sometimes in order to get to that space so that you can dive into the script with that sensibility yeah it's nice to have just a few minutes to hang out and shoot the breeze <laughs> i agree <laughs> How did you, how did you come to this work? What's your, like, where, I, I, I only know you from the context of what's available publicly about you on your websites and things, but then also in, in our interaction and, yeah. uh, which, which every, and, you know, I mean, I preface this by, by saying like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> coming into a session into, um, into whether it's in this context or going into, uh, any studio, like, like just seeing your face in the sessions just gave me tremendous joy. Cause I knew we were in for a great time and, uh, you know, um, I don't know, like, it's just like you're, you're hands down, like in my top three favorite directors I've ever worked with can, and to be able to build a relationship with you, like over the period of 50 some episodes is like, glorious so um but that's that uh, there i got that out of the way now now we well, can let just... me also say i mean what i love so much about you is you come not just ready to play but like excited to play <laughs> i can and the great thing is you can i could sense that through the zoom waves <laughs> didn't even have to be in the same room with you to feel that there's just this hunger and joy and um and you also feel grateful to be in the space that you're in. And it's just, it's, it's exciting from my point of view to get to play with, awesome. play with you Thank and you to so play much. with the, all the energy that you bring and the sort of them 
like if I throw an idea out, um, you're like, yeah, yeah let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, great. It's just really fun. It's like uh, we often call, you know, our sessions a playground or whatever. But it really feels like that with you. I feel like we are two kids on a playground and we're yes anding the heck out of things yeah. with each other. Amazing. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. And I, I like I love I love your like there's there are jokes and moments that I'll drive by with my initial sort of take. But then you, I just made my hair look like Ed Grimley. Sorry. Uh, uh, but like, you, I'll drive by something. Then you'll be like, oh, uh, there might be some money on the table. Try this bit. And like, and having that sense of uh, play on the same wavelength that we're rooted in that same connection. And like, I've commented before too, on like how, how hilarious your impressions of everybody else are. <laughs> But like how informative and helpful and instructive that is in the moment, like yeah. that gift of giving me Matt Watterson's read and then, <laughs> and then Amy Landecker's <laughs> sort of sort of sardonic, you know, ugly reaction to something that I've done. Like it's it's really really helpful in the in, given that this is the first like series that I've been, um, you know, a regular on in in animation. It's like. Uh, and that we began this at like literally our our first table read was the very last public thing that yeah. any of us had done for the most part. Yeah, but which is so wild, incredible. But yeah, I would say, I, I, you know, I try not to go too far with impressions or impersonations <laughs> of what the other actors are doing with their characters, but as you mentioned, give you enough so that you know where that character is going to land so yeah. that when we hear everything together, it makes sense. Yeah. And for me just going, um, and sometimes it's necessary, but going line by line and hitting it three times in a row just doesn't like scratch the itch for me. I feel like yeah. getting a sense of the whole scene, if we can do it, um, brings so much more. And also I think sometimes catches the actor off guard in a good way a yeah. little bit like you just got to be and that's what all, all actors are there to play and come from that perspective but then i think sometimes with animation we get accustomed to doing up oh, three in a row gonna go do this and slightly different each time etc yeah. but that takes us out of what is the context of this scene yeah what are we playing with here who are what's the relationship like yeah. you said where's the money on the table like all that stuff can sometimes get lost if we just poke in for lines here and then another line three times and then another line three times you know yeah yeah and as i said sometimes that's necessary and sometimes that's the right way to hit it but i love that we got to to play and i'm so grateful that i had so many incredible actors i could uh do a lousy impersonation of. <laughs> <laughs> well let, let, me, let me go back to the to my my starting question like where what, what's what's your story where are you from how'd you get into How'd you get into doing this? Uh, it's, all, it's all top secret. Oh, oh, well, all right. Well, this has been Serena Irwin, everyone. Thanks so much for... <laughs> I came of age pre-internet, believe it or not, that exists. There is a time. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, uh, I went to college in San Francisco, came, uh, graduated with a degree in international relations and theater, and what? always knew I wanted to go in to theater, but I loved IR so much. What is it about um, international relations that, that captured your imagination when you were like you know, college age? A couple, like I, I am a firm believer in um, being a witness to the world community, not just uh, local, but mm -hmm. keeping um, heart, eyes, mind open to the fact that we're all a part of planet Earth and beyond, like, you know, mm -hmm. universe galaxy blah yeah but um so i've always just been interested in in other cultures other ways and then the politics that move all of the nations in the direction that we all move in and i heard that that was the most difficult major uh, <laughs> to get a degree in and i thought well let's give it a shot <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a freshman, I took a graduate level, you know, 
arrogance is everything. I took a graduate <laughs> level international relations, like world law class. And the teacher was speaking about MNCs, and I'm like, I don't know what an MNC is. So I just wrote E-M-E-N-C-I-E-S, and there was a graduate student sitting next to me. He's like, that's MNC, multinational corporation. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> I, I have so much to learn. Um, but, but it was great. And like, you know, in that same class, uh, after our first test, I went up to the teacher. I'm like, hey, I, everything on here is... I, you know, it was all essays. I'm like, I got, I knew everything, and yet you gave me a B plus. Why? He's like, because you don't know the language, mm. which, um, wow. and terminology, which really brings us also back around to um, being in animation, and and it is another language as mm. well. And uh, as a director, as an actor, producer, artist, etc., um, there's a whole language in this world that um, that I would love to. I, you know, I think maybe it's out there. Andrea Romano mentored me. It's how I became um, even ever had the opportunity to become a director in this field. Amazing. And she really taught me the language of, of this world in a way that I didn't understand it, had not had the experience of it from that perspective as an actor. Yeah. But, yeah. So anyhow, yeah, after um, college, uh, ended up seeing a little advert. Actually, I was in a... Uh, film a little indie film and a guy came on set and was like serena have you seen this little that, like advert for a group that's looking for um it's like sketch comedy and it's all women's group you should totally do that and i thought oh that oh yeah that would be fun <laughs> and called the number got picked up like took the bart across i was in san francisco took the bart over to oakland uh -huh. this, this woman picked me up like chain smoking cigarettes with like her leg you know hanging out one window driving with the other I'm like who is this person we went to her living room and just improvised together the two of us she had come from second city in, oh, in chicago no kidding and susan mealy and um her husband was doing work at um, the LBL, Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Uh -huh. And so she's like, I need to start a group of funny in SF. And then it ended up being three people, myself, her, and Kathleen Fontaine, who is now Quinn Fontaine. Oh, and man. Has transitioned. But um, we had such an extraordinary time just playing together. Um, ultimately, became pretty popular up in San Francisco, because, mainly because we would just do promo, like run around to neighborhoods, dress up in crazy outfits, jump out of the car and hand out flyers in every neighborhood. We'd have the most diverse, interesting audiences. Incredible. And so I just got into characters that way. Huh. It was like finding voices for characters. And, um, and then we ultimately were invited down to LA for what was then at HBO had a workspace. Oh yeah. And Comedy Central workspace. But yeah. At that time was HBO and um, and it didn't work out. You know, we kind of had meetings for the three of us. It didn't kind of go in that direction, but I ended up thinking, well, if I'm ever going to stay and try this, might as well stay now where yeah. I know at least five people. <laughs> Before I knew none. Yeah. So um, just, yeah, just, and uh and then from there was doing sort of sketch, improv, and um, and a friend of a friend, like a friend of mine had a friend, and she said, hey, Serena, a friend of a friend just got a show greenlit at, uh, at Nickelodeon. You should send your reel. They're auditioning. And I said, well, I don't have a reel. <laughs> I mean, I have a sketch reel, but I don't have an animation reel. And she yeah. said, well, just send your, send your sketch reel. <sighs> and so uh, I ended up doing that. And that was for SpongeBob. And it was to, I sent it, my sketch reel to Steve Hillenberg, who forwarded it to Donna um, Grillo, who was casting. Uh -huh. She brought me in for uh, Pearl, Sandy, and Mrs. Puff none of which I got, but they called up and they said, hey, you can, you've can, you got a great range. Yeah. Um, we're not going to cast you as any of those characters, but 
you could be SpongeBob's mom. We're gonna have you in as SpongeBob's mom. Maybe you know we don't really want her around that much, <laughs> but <laughs> but we probably have other things for you, and yeah. you know just keep you in the fold. And honestly, if it were not for Steve Hillenburg, if it weren't for Derek Dryman, Paul Tibbet. Vince Waller, Mark Tuccarelli, um, and all of the people that have been running SpongeBob over the years, I wouldn't have been able to stay in the game as long as I have to explore other things and yeah. to find my way. You know, wow. it, it it took time to figure out like where where do I, where does my skill set where is it of use to yeah. anyone? Yeah, you know, and um, and I'm so incredibly grateful to to them all to have had that opportunity to be able to you know make a living um a, a simple but steady living and and continue to explore theater yeah. which i love so much and um and writing and doing short films and directing plays and you know all the other things that you love to do that don't pay a dime in fact Right. Cost you money to do. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But like to have that sustaining, a, a sustaining creative straight job for, for all, yeah. you know, and, and what, and from the outs, from, from, I mean, from, from when we arrived here, like I, I never thought of in particular, like animation or VO or whatever being my straight job, but it, it does can and will become that. And you still, I was talking with, with Kari Walgren about this in this context about like, what do you do when you've, when you've hit the thing that was your dreams? Like, well, you, you, you have to kind of continue to invent and, and, and discover what speaks to you creatively and where can you, where can you, you know, cause once you've got, once you've completed the bingo card, the game's over. So, but, the, but you want to keep playing, um, you know, so Definitely. like that's uh it's beautiful. I'm I'm that's it's it's amazing that 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 show was you know able to provide so many opportunities for you both like oh my gosh. like yeah. range like just the the variety of of you know uh Tadashur calls it being a session player, right? Like being able yeah. to just pick up all the different spots and like oh yeah, I can do that. I can play a toilet, I can play a star. I can, you know, I can play a candle, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. I mean, it, um, and you know, for a quote unquote straight job, it is. I'm about the most fun you can have. I mean, honestly, it. To me, as you, I didn't look at it as this is not why I came to town. I didn't have, I actually didn't even grow up with a TV, so I didn't. Not only oh, wow. did I not have a knowledge connection to, I mean, I knew about cartoons obviously animation sure. but it was not the forefront of my uh of my mind or imagination but um since being involved with it to me it is the space that just cr like provides for the actors the most creative freedom they might ever see um yeah. in their careers i mean it is such a wonderful place to to get to play Yes. And there's such encouragement for that, for that exploration too. I mean, we talked about there needing to be time, like we move, we move, we move. And you do have to be able to, like once you start bringing a voice to the table, you gotta be able to dip back into that voice. You gotta have a way back in. Yeah. Because if you come in in five months to ADR something, you gotta know how to get back in that, in that voice, right? Yeah. And you've gotta stay consistent from beginning of script to end of script too. Yeah. So you have to have, been playing with these voices um and 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 then you finally have a zone where i mean i'm not gonna be hired as a woman on camera to do this you know i'm not i'm right. just not not yet right maybe that will come and i and i welcome those days <laughs> right but you know yeah I, I could be in my early 20s and playing an old light and that just and there's so much creativity yeah. that is allowed yes. and invited and welcomed and all that stuff. So, yeah, I just, I, I, I can't, I cannot tell you how incredibly fortunate I feel to have, like, found myself oh, man. in this territory. It's just, I, I can't even believe it. I, you know, like, that that point that you just made about, like, not only 
you know, the gift of the work, the opportunity of it, but like also, you know, working specifically on a show like what we've been working on of like having, having a nice uh, celebrity footprint to be able to always measure my, my foot against, you know what I mean? To like, that's, that gives you this, that, that same kind of thing of like, I'm a, I'm just a, a guy from the Midwest who is able to mimic a little bit and, I, and I've got, you know, some tra- training and whatnot. And, I, and, and I'm in touch with my emotional life. So I'm able to play those things. But like I've said a, a couple of times, you know, privately too, of like, I, otherwise it, my on camera could never be given the opportunity to do the kind of things that we're doing in this context, both, yeah. you know, well, you will be, you will be. And that will happen on camera for you. If it hasn't already, it will, it will, because mm. I mean, like you just said, um, you have an emotional core and center that you're able to tap into. Mm. And it's such a beautiful thing. I've talked, I spoke about it in our group meeting, but you in your daddy daughter day, also yeah. your, you know, I mean, your time with, um, with AJ and the thunk, thunk. Yeah. every, I mean, there's just the great thing about crudes is there, um, Mark and Todd did such a Mark banker, Todd Grimes did such a great job of figuring out how to have the comedy always there and alive, but the heart and the truth of these relationships yeah. just fully explored to their, just the core essence of humanity at yeah. its trickiest and at its best like it was it was there and you, you know you took it and ran with it and thank you you know it's hard too as you mentioned like being able to have a celebrity thing to drop into can also become a handcuff of some sort you know it can yeah be yeah really hard i'm, I'm really that. really blessed to have i, I mean Look at look at our source cast. I mean, from the features. I mean, everybody is extraordinary. From Catherine, Ke- I mean, like, give me a break. Peter Dinklage and and yeah. Nicholas Cage to to get the opportunity to to do some of the things that that guy has done in the movies is unbelievable. In both the Crudes films is unbelievable. There's yeah. so much, and that was really, I think, my way in for it was like it's the end of the first Crudes. That's really the the well that I consistently, you know, would draw from throughout of like, I'm going to connect to to those moments. It's easy to grab onto the anger. It's easy to grow, grab onto the strength. And, you know, and what I really appreciate about what, you know, what the team has generated is, you know, they've all the funny is all there, but all the hearts there, too. And that's that's rare. Um, you know, especially for, you know, honestly, especially for television animation, there's been a lot of TV animations. I've absolutely blown my mind, Yeah, you know, so oh my God, good. from Gumball to Phineas and Ferb to all that stuff. But anyway, uh, can, it was fascinating. This, the, the conversation that was beginning about, about, uh, the language of animation. Can, can you talk about your experience with, with, uh, you know, Andrea Romano mentoring you and your transition, like, like the transition, like I, I want to talk about some of your other performance stuff as well, but I'm, I'm really fascinated too in, in like how that experience emerged and how it changed you, not only as a performer, but then how directing has changed you as well. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, so Andrea and I became friends when she started directing SpongeBob. And I think that went on for about five years. And I would say, I mean, we had a friendship, but it was also sort of a professional friendship, you know, but I just always really loved her and I couldn't put my finger on. I I think it was probably, I felt like there was always a creative opening for play with her. Hmm. I loved the way that she spoke with actors. I loved her. Um, and, and, um, respected her prep that she had done in order to play with us and it felt like everything all the sessions were directed cleanly and clearly but also had space in them for the exploration that the actor was going to take and i mean here she was a spongebob very different thing to be directing tom kinney than 
to be directing me. I mean, there's hmm. two, <laughs> Tom Kenny, creator of iconic character Serena Irwin, who's that? Um, <laughs> so she, you know, but yet she treats everyone, has treated everyone as an equal in, in the, on the playground. Yeah. And, um, and I always really felt um, heartened by that. Uh, at, as I started to direct pieces, once I knew her, um, I would invite her to come and see them. And uh, she came and saw me in things that I was in as an actor as well. Amazing. And, uh, you know, every time she had a party and I was lucky enough to get an invitation, you know I was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. And, um, <laughs> Those are the best the emails. Like, oh, oh by the God. way, we're having a thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, I want to respond, but I don't respond so fast. Uh, <laughs> right. let oh, us... like, I'm going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and just the more I got to know her, the more I, I appreciated and just respected and adored her. And um, and ultimately, I was I think I had applied to the directing workshop for women, which is um, oh, yeah. AFI. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked her if she would send, you know, put in a recommendation. Um, and she did. And I did not get in. Huh. And um, and then, like, maybe a year or so later, um, I applied again and said, would you write another recommendation? She said, yes. And at that point, she had seen a couple more of, like, plays that I had directed. Yeah. Um, again, I did not get in. But I got closer. I got, you know, had ended up having conversation, brought in for an, um, for conversation with the people that were running it at uh -huh. the time. And uh, in fact, I think that happened right after I had started working with Andrea because in my conversation with AFI, they were like, well, <laughs> if you already have a mentor, hmm. you don't need this program. <laughs> yeah. Like go about your merry way and give other people opportunities here. I'm like, uh. but, um, uh, not so in there, in between there, Andrea had come to a couple of plays. She invited me over to her house and said, Hey, I want to talk to you about the work you did in those plays. Uh, what was that like for you? How, uh, how was it working with the actors? Did you get from the actors what you had wanted to get from the actors? If not, why not? I mean, she just sort of yeah. didn't say why she was asking me any of this. She just sort of brought me over and sort of started asking me about my experience as a, as a director. Yeah. And then um, I kept thinking like, oh man, I, I would sure love to be mentored by her, but I, I know that if I do that, it, it's going to be 100% focus, and I'm going to need to let be at a place where I'm ready to, ready to let go of my other focuses yeah. and other interests, at least for a while, yeah. you know, for yeah. a, a long stretch, so I can really commit myself to it. And so I was like, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. And as it was sort of heating up for me, she invited me and a couple of people over for a dinner and I showed up and the other people all canceled. And then her partner of many years uh, fell asleep at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, because she and I got to talking and it was, and she said, you know, um, I'm thinking about retiring and I feel like you would be a really good fit as a mentee. And it was sort of like we both kind of asking oh. each other to go on a date at the same time amazing like, it came i think from both of us having thought about this for a while and yeah and i was like yes yes please <laughs> yes please <laughs> and and at that point it just sort of became a weekly uh teaching and i would go over to her house she was so incredibly generous with her time and we would spend like three hours or so um, talking about various prongs of that, what a director needs to be able to handle, like communication and paperwork things with studio, with producer, with the actors, with the engineers, 
language to communicate with all of these people, the speed with which things need to be moved through. And then, you know, of course, ultimately, like prepping a script. How do you prep a script? How do you, you know, work with one character and then be able to get to the next, char next character five weeks later and know what you did with that mm. one that they're in a scene with? You know, like yeah. keeping track of all that it really became about... Um, how to best do that obviously she had done it for 32 years so yeah. she had put a system in place that was <laughs> incredibly yeah uh, helpful and i i kid you i i've told her ample times i have never um received such unbridled generosity in my life and to have it in a career in the direction of a career endeavor to have it from her it just felt I'm so incredibly grateful and it just felt like it was just such a special thing and um, and I am forever indebted to her and she knows she can ask anything of me and I would be there in a, heart, <laughs> a heartbeat she has that oh, she knows that it's beautiful um, but yeah, and so it, after about a year of working like that or so, um, she, you know, essentially long and short, she decided to retire early, mm. uh, earlier than she had thought she would. And she said, I want to just bring you in and uh, give you a shot in the director's chair, see if these shows that I'm on right now might be comfortable continuing with you. And, um, and so I had the opportunity. They all thankfully did. <laughs> I'm so grateful to oh. Doug Langdale and to Rob Hoagie and to Joaquin Phoenix and Lauren Montgomery. Those mm. were the, the four showrunners. Joaquin and Lauren were working on Voltron. Oh, wow. Um, Doug was on Puss in Boots. Rob was on Nico and the Sword of Light, and they all took a chance with me. Wow! And um, and of course, I met with the studios as well, and we, you know, talked about. And um, and I really also feel very grateful to Anya O'Hare, who gave me a big shot at DreamWorks and ah. you know her well. Um, so it's with you know, without these people that believe in us, that stand by us, that give us chances, even when they don't know us, yeah. even when they don't believe in us, don't know us, don't know us to believe in us. Yeah. Um, it's those people that change lives. And so for me, I feel like all of those people I just mentioned um, absolutely changed my life and gave yeah. me an opportunity. And I know for people listening, there are those people out there for you too, no matter what your field is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I hope you find them. <laughs> I hope we all find them. I hope we all find so them too. Meaningful. They are. It's it's so like I don't know, it's it's all so humbling like when when you when you take or when you when you encounter that person who who like you you just you just like what? Me? I I don't understand like and sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for, for my wife, Sherry, who, who will reflect back to me. Like you no, you stop it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like stop your false humility. Uh, but then you're like, it's not necessarily false humility. It's like, it's a sense of, it is that sense of awareness of just, I'm just an artist trying to find my way through here. And then, and, and the business can be uh, a real challenging uh, grind and when you get this gift of generosity from someone who you either look up to have always looked up to or is like has been a like you know your north star one of the people that you just enjoy working with and you're like we get I just want to spend time with you like well, whatever we're producing I don't care I just want to hang and have fun because th it makes the project that we're doing more fun you know absolutely absolutely yeah. and as you pointed to the especially at your age, my age, um, there's no way we've survived in this town without having <laughs> like 10 garbage trucks full of heartbreak. Oh you know? yeah, it's absolutely. Hurt. There's so many things that you wish for that you've gotten close on that didn't happen that, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's hard and to stay what, 
like to me the most beautiful thing in actors that I love so much and respect so much is their connection to the vulnerability of the human spirit mm -hmm. and it is so hard to stay open to that when on the other side of it you're and it's not personal the thing I know now mm -hmm. from the casting side and directing side it truly isn't you've heard it a million times from casting people it's not personal I mean yeah sometimes yeah you're just not you didn't bring your A game and you're not going to get that part yeah. that's it but yeah. sometimes it comes down to all this random stuff that is not there's no way one could say that's fair. It's not. Right. It's not. There's no fairness. There's no, it's like. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know? I'm just reflecting back on like casting a student show at Second City or casting a show as directing and sitting there with a pile of headshots of yeses and nos and maybes. And then moving them around and it was the combination that made it. And then there was, then there was the compromise that was surprising with other teachers who were like, this person is gonna, they're gonna do the thing. And you're like, I don't have experience with that person, but if you say so, okay, we'll try. Like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, and then no eye contact with the people that didn't make it, <laughs> oh. you know? Like oh. that whole thing. And I, I, I stumbled upon this idea, I may have expressed it before, the idea of like, th there's a lot less rejection here than, than um, than there is not being selected. And that, uh, mm. and that yeah. notion helps me navigate not being selected uh, and yeah. not saying like, oh, I just auditioned for that Ford thing and they rejected me. No, they didn't. They didn't reject no. me. They just chose, you know, Andre Soyuzo. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> they just chose him and that's fine. And, yeah. uh, you know, and Andre should do that job because he's right for it. And I'd, I'd be right for it too, but that's not the flavor they went. So right. you you just go, that's out of my hands and until I can, you know, and, and then there are the days where I'm the thing. So, yeah. you know, that's, you're the Jolly Rancher that's chosen out of the candy bowl. I know that there has been like talk of this and I think it's really important to keep that in mind. It is not rejection. It's not because that makes it too personal. Yes. And it's, it's really, unfortunately though, it's not that personal. But the one thing that is essential is that everybody, whether it's your director, actor, artist, whatever you are, you got to keep doing. You got to just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then you're not. So even if you're doing a play for your friends that will come over and see it, or you're making, you know, I mean, right now, everything you could throw online. Yeah. There's no, there's no reason to not create. There's no reason to not create. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And like the, uh, I mean, creation begets other creation too. And, mm -hmm. and it ties, it's like what we were talking about at the beginning. Like it's, if you're doing it for the sake of creation, that, that in itself is, is enough. It should be the motivation. If you're, if you're thinking too far beyond of this is going to be the thing that gets me this, it starts to smell like that desperation, you know, it starts to smell like that you know the the best the best viral videos are the ones that just just catch because they're they're because it's authentic it's the thing yeah you know not like a thing that sort of smells like the thing it's so interesting that like how good we are as human beings and how all human beings are so good at sniffing out authenticity mm. and that is what we're all looking for yeah is to to, to witness an authentic moment I was just talking with Sherry about that very thing, driving home from dropping off the kid at school. And the idea of the difference between a sound effects library and a Foley stage. Mm -hmm. And that we know the di it's not enough to sound like the thing. You gotta be the thing. Consequently, you will sound like it because you are the thing. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that authenticity is so critical in and like I mean I think that's that's all acting training really is too is to try to get you to that place of getting connected and comfortable with your authenticity yeah. you know um yeah, yeah it's, it's a, I mean yeah here here stripping away the the masks that we put up and I think mm. that writers are looking to do that too so mm. that you know, when the actor meets the writer right there in that space yeah. of like 
it's funny that it's even you know of course from what you come from like truth and comedy mm. like that it's in all forms yes so you got it it's not just like drama now i must reveal self and be truly organic <laughs> no it's like <laughs> you know <laughs> that's, that's malarkey <laughs> um you know it's it's really all forms it's that yeah. catching that catching it and yeah. then that's the challenge of being an actor is like is having that feel authentic yeah. <laughs> even though well, it might be something you labored on stacking seven scripts on top of each other for different clients and contact and and then and doing your prep and knowing where you are but being able to grab a keyframe in your mind emotion an emotional keyframe an image or a piece of music or whatever it might be to be able to help you get from neutral to that point um you know yeah. it's just, it's it's just and it's practice right and that, like that comes back to doing of just yeah. like just yeah. make stuff play with people do it yeah. you know yep fascinating that's where the good stuff comes i tell, think too it's like so good i agree man tell, tell me about like what are i mean there's there's no shortcuts and I guess what I'm what I'm curious about is like what do you look for in both as a because I imagine as as a director you're you participate in the casting process if you're not a casting director on a show is that true or is that less than the case more like here's our cast and you're sort of our hired gun to direct for however that's long general, if I haven't been the casting director on it that's generally what it is really yeah. okay yeah here's All right. the cast and here's the script. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no. no, I mean, when I, when uh, I'm taking something from pilot stage, they provide the series Bible, um, art, uh, the, all the scripts that they have that are written, maybe the outline for the season, and then also the, all of the actors they've cast, and then their auditions so I can hear where they landed things. Okay. And, um, and you know, generally a little, at least one meeting um, with the uh, showrunners to sort of just pick their brain about tone. Yeah. If it's not, I mean, a lot of times it's real clear in the script. I mean, that's what I've said even to some, I was just recently working with, with a showrunner and it was going to be her first time showrunning and she's like, how do, do we, how do we communicate? I said, to me, the script does all the communication. Hmm. So um, obviously with showrunners, I'm also you know, touching in with them throughout the record. Yeah. But everything that you want me to know, I I expect to find it in the script. Mm. You know, and that doesn't mean like any kind of uh, obvious acting direction. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Or like <laughs> like <laughs> references or something like that. that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the great thing is the writers that we're working with are so incredibly good. Oh, my God. But it is all there. Yeah. yeah it's all right there. And um, so, yeah, when I'm coming in as just a hired hire director, I don't don't generally have much opportunity to be a part of the casting. What What do you when you when you are doing? I mean, I, I'm assuming a lot of the folks who listen here are, are, are actors when you're in the casting process. You know, what are the things that 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 grab your ear that that make you go? I, that's someone who surprised me or um you know like like what's what's your what's your process with with going through that and um you know and that, yeah like what 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 grabs your ear you know i heard this a lot as an actor and i didn't get it this is one thing i would be better at now hmm. as an actor um and i th is tone understanding the tone of the show that you're auditioning for. And I cannot tell you how much that helps. The great thing is obviously the internet is there. If you're with a brand new show that there's nothing on, I mean, you can't see anything and all you've got are the words in your sides and then the description that they've offered you. I would suggest just get as um, Sherlock Holmesy as you can get. Hmm detective it to the bone um, to try and figure out what the tone could be. If you know that 
the um, and sometimes even it'll say like as a casting director if I, if I want I might say something innocuous like keep it real or something boring and horrible like that. But, um, that's just one of the clues. Then there are a set of clues that are going to come from what is the thing titled? What's the title of the thing? Even if it's a fake title, what did they title it as? Because that's another clue. Every single thing in the description is a clue. If your agent will give you sides, if there are other characters that they're auditioning for, but the agent didn't send you that. Yeah. If you can ask your agent, could you send the sides from the other characters as well, just so I can get a little bit of better sense contextually where I'm to be living. Yeah. That can be helpful. I mean, the hard thing is a lot of times with new shows, they're trying not to put too much out there. Yeah. Um, so I, I would suggest also the, the possibility of saying, okay, like, geez, I've done all my detective sleuthing. I think this is the right tone, but I also have this other idea for another way. Of huh. course, do both and send both in. Um, uh, I'm, and I think d different people feel differently. You got to remember, I'm one person yes. in a sea of many people who are casting <laughs> yes. and directing. No one person has any answers. It's only other clues, clues to go forward with. But mm -hmm. for me, um, uh, I only want to hear multiple takes if it's a very different take on the character. Mm. Um, rather than two takes that sound similar, but maybe you made a slightly different choice. I get it. I'm an actor too. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, I like this choice and I like yeah, this choice. I couldn't decide I between these know. two. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's up to you to make that choice. Yeah. You gotta make that choice. Which yeah. one do you like more? Which one feels like it fits the script and character more and make that choice and choose that one, send it in now. If you know you're gonna go for a completely different sound, great. I love that. That's fun too. Yeah. And um, I think I, you know, I've been working with my kiddo, who's been getting into um, oh, animation. Fantastic. And he's so creative, and it's really fun <laughs> to get to work with him because it's like re it's it's reminding me of my being a student mm -hmm. and all of the things that were helpful to me. Um, I studied with Larry Moss for years oh, and there's, yeah. you know, I mean, I you only do like one week long intensive a year, but over the course of years and sometimes I would go and just sit and watch him work with other people and um, a lot obviously can be learned in that, in that period of time, but, yeah. um, you know, it's choices. And that's such a general thing to say, but it's actually very specific. What are the choices that you're making? And that all loops back into detectiving it. Yeah. Like for him, we've gotten some sides. I'm like, what are these? I don't even know what this means. It doesn't even make sense. And then he and I sit and talk and like, okay, so this is mentioned. But that's a different name, but I don't think that's the real name. They're giving a fake name there, but they meant yeah. to put that name. You know, you're like yeah. trying to connect dots. And then, well, what's the most interesting? What hmm. actually, what is an interesting choice that doesn't... One of the things I love that Larry Moss says, and maybe he got this from Stella Adler, I cannot remember, but... <laughs> um, you know, it's actors that, some, that sometimes choose to make... Um, general choices hmm. human beings when we're interacting we make specific choices yes. we don't generally wishy-wash on our choices yeah so if you're looking at script and you're thinking i don't know really what this means i'm just going to say the words no nope. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you come to the right choice so-called and i put the right in quotes yeah or not make a specific choice for that Mm -hmm. and and stay out of generalities mm. even if you have no clue what what like i don't know what is happening here can can we just dig craft it for yourself craft this world craft it craft the other characters what they just said to you and respond with the line that's given to you mm. can we dig into specific choice versus general choice 
in terms of emotional intent, Sorry. meaning, like, I, I, and I know it can be anything, but it's like that, that, that specific idea of like, I'm, yeah, make choices. And I, I've given this note a million times, <laughs> like both teaching and directing, yes. but then, and to and myself, it like such yeah. And it's, it's but it's, it's like, mad. but it it's not, it's like, I'll, in a weird kind of way, I'll know it when I see it, like choose like the, the note that I've been giving or that I gave two recent notes. One is I, I love the movie. I, I speak in, I explained to, I think I've told you this. I speak in movie. So if you, if you, I, I speak in movie moments and like you and Mark Banker. Oh yeah. And it's one of the reasons we get on so well. And I can, he can be like, Oh, have you seen uh, top secret? You know, that bit yeah. when Val Kilmer and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I remember I have yeah. seen it, but I, but anyway, like for me, it's the movie, the professional where, where Leon teaches okay. Matilda oh, how, oh how to shoot. And he says, your first person you're going to kill, you're going to kill with a sniper rifle because killing is very intimate. So if you kill with a knife, that's like commercial copy. <laughs> like it's there's there's no mask. Uh, whereas the aesthetic distance from with a sniper rifle um, is very is very long. So it's kind of like a general choice is is like the sniper rifle choice. You know what I mean? Like there's mm. there's so much there's there's just no in, there's no intention. It's just like. Uh, yeah, like I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just as much trying to work through it too because sometimes it's super clear, like, a, or like my creativity feels very sharp in a moment, and I'm gonna make a specific choice that's a surprise. But then other times where I'm like, I got, uh, uh, like, what's, right. what's your process for that when you're, you know, when you're let like, myself, I think don't let yourself off the hook. Hmm. Uh, what you're talking about, I think, it, absolutely, I think everyone stood in that space. Sometimes you you have you're like oh my gosh yes i'm hungry i can't wait to make these choices like i've got a lot of choices i'm gonna try all i'm gonna see which choice best serves the script because for us i feel like as as the actors and the director the script is that's that's if we're gonna put it into religious terms that's that's our god yeah that's the one that we we want to serve right so mm. um which choices are the ones that you're making that you think bring that script, that world, those characters, that moment to life? Mm. And if you're feeling like you said, and I feel like the same thing, I think it just takes, I think it takes all of us just sitting with it and, and it's harder, but making choices. And if it's like, I don't know, I don't know about that. I don't get it. So how can I make a choice? Uh, keep trying to get it. <laughs> keep trying to figure out why don't I get that? What is said about that? If I don't get the words in this m line, is anything said around, above, anywhere else that I have access to mm -hmm. that can help inform me about this? Um, and if you really work every single thing that you've received and you can't, still can't make heads or tails of it, make up a world that makes sense that you think might connect to this world, but you don't know, but you think, mm -hmm. ah, okay, I'm going to just have to do this. I'm going to have to make that this happened, even though it, there's no word of that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm going to take from the perspective of this character, given the little bit I do understand, I'm going to build a whole world, which is what Oz and I did with his script where I couldn't, I mean, he, he and I were both like, I, we just started taking all the little tiny pieces and there were enough clues. Yeah. to put it all together where it was we still had no idea if we were absolutely out in the weeds or if we had found something that was right and he got the part wow he, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome I'm like good god but to me it was it we spent probably two and a half hours talking about choices wow. the choices and the script was five lines so wow. I think the, and you know, what's also funny is I don't think I would have done that for myself. It's like that. It's my child. I'm more available. I'm like, completely I understand just what you kick mean. myself completely. in the butt. I yeah. want to hit myself. I mean, I hate to bring, you know, visual, I mean, <laughs> you know, physical abuse into this, but it's like, and it shouldn't be there. 
But I am so upset with myself mm -hmm. for not giving myself that time yeah. and taking that time. And, um, and so I hope anyone listening to this yeah. will take away from it. You, des you deserve to give yourself that time. And also the people listening deserve to have had you take the time to discover. Mm. Because that's what they're, that's what we're looking for. That's what casting people are looking for is looking for discoveries that have been made. Mm. You know? Yeah. Is that too mushy mushy or does it mean anything? Not at all. Okay. I mean, I'll give you, I just, just to, to reciprocate, like I just saw a, a play over the weekend and and it was you know it was shakespeare and some of the performers had done that work and some of them hadn't and either whether they were able or that had the time or whatever it 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 screamed as you were watching it some people would just blast through their dialogue and kind of like have a general like it's the difference between, I mean, this is the improv training kicking in again, but it's like it's the difference between past the ketchup and past the Heinz. Like right. it's the, the specificity of, well, in this moment, this character is angry. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's an entire, you know, 20 line monologue about one color. But in reality, each line is a different shade of that color. And and it gives me a full mosaic of like angry, hurt, uh, despondent, self, uh, self-loathing, uh, but also uh, uh, offense. Like there's so many other aspects to it and you have to, you know, like be, because, and you do, like the people who like, who've gotten into it and are, you know, 20 year vets and are like done stuff and have booked stuff and are do signings are just as guilty of just like rip and read. Yeah. And, and you're right. Like that, that, um, the gift of time that, especially when you're instructing someone, especially your kid th that you, that you don't take for yourself is like, yeah. yeah. While you were doing a little bit of self flagellation, I was, I was right there with you. Doing the exact oh, no. same thing. But I hate to, I hate to do that, but it's because I, we don't deserve it. Those of mm. us who, who, you know, it's like, it doesn't, don't take the time to beat yourself up because yeah. that is not time well spent. The time yeah. is well spent in investigating if really what you want to do is be an actor or even or a director or yeah. an or any any part in the arts. <laughs> yeah. It is take the time to just invest in that in that script or in in that moment or in mm. that you know you don't wait. life's too short, my friend. Yes. Life's too short, and it's such a uh, a euphemism. It's such a it's uh, it seems that seems so general, but um, like over I know that you know this, but over the past year and a half, two years, I've lost my dad, my stepdad, my mother-in-law, one of my best friends, my favorite cat. You know, it's like yeah. all these things. Um, remind you um that for me my perspective is um you know it's hard but we are nothing <laughs> it's it's hard to re yeah we're just tiny little things that have huge egos <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah. you know if we are fortunate enough to be here shooting for our dreams um, even in the muck and mire of that we're, uh, we're standing in a huge place of privilege yeah. and um, nothing better than to dive full long into it not waste any time with so called beating ourselves up yeah yeah agreed yeah totally agreed and I think about like a um, motivator for me too with that kind of stuff is uh, I, I think about the kid I was at seven, eight who would give his eye teeth and uh, more to be doing what 
52-year-old me is doing right now. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the execution of the promise of his imagination. And that goal, and, and if I ever sit back and rest on my laurels and uh, rest on my, or uh -uh. on my IMDb credits, it's uh -uh. a, it's a disservice happen. to that, to the struggle. <laughs> To, to everything totally. that, yeah. so um, that um, motivates. I, yeah, there's nobody here doing this profession that didn't have struggle. There's not, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I, I even think people who maybe, you, you know, we might look at and say, well, they had it lucky, they had family in the business or whatever. No, those people are still have their own struggle. It's different. It's different than coming from out of nowhere. Yeah. But um, there's nobody that gets out without yeah. without their fair share. It's That's life. Right. That's I life. Mean, come on, life is the same way. That's it. That's we're exactly all in this. Right. Uh, we're all in this together, <laughs> trying to feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, our our time is coming to as rapidly coming to a close. I can't tell you how just how great it is just to be able to sit and chat with you for an hour and get to know you even better. And I'm so blessed to have you not only as a colleague, but as a friend and in my life and everything, I'm so grateful to you. So, um, mm. yeah, this right has back been at you. amazing. And I'll tell you, just so that this is public, because it's true. Um, <laughs> you mentioned you were taking a producing class, and I'm like, oh, okay, now I know who I'm going to have as my producer when I make that, sh that film that I need to make. It is you. Okay. So, Done. get ready in like, well, you know, three years. Give me a script. <laughs> give me a script, Serena. I'm already waiting. <laughs> you got it. You got it. See, now I've got I have two to, more classes. Now I have to do that. Yeah, 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 me too. I got to finish my two classes so I can at least have the document to point to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a date. I promise you. Let's make it. Let's make it. I love it. Let's make. So great. Um, so great. So since we're both on on uh, working the Crude's family tree, there's a brand new season dropping at the end of, of Woo August. Woo! Which you I'm very check excited it for. Out. Gotta check it out. Hulu and Peacock, it's out there, man. What are what are some other things that you've got out um, that uh, you would love to uh, let people know about how they can um, check out your work and or reach out to you or? Um, yeah. So another one that just dropped that I've been directing is Harley Quinn. Oh, amazing! Fun, amazing, and. Um, Baby Shark on Nickelodeon, as well as Shark Dog. And then, of course, you can hear me in SpongeBob or Camp Coral or The Patrick Show. So basically, underwater market. <laughs> You've got on lock. <laughs> and, um, and then, of course, yes, Crude's Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Yeah. Um, which is a series, another series I'm very proud of the work in there awesome and um we baby bears oh wow very yeah. uh, it's on cartoon network it's very um surreal it can i love it it's a preschool show and doesn't land in the territory that i'm familiar with hmm. um from preschool shows amazing i don't know i really I love the shows I'm working on so much. I love all the showrunners I work with so much. I just want to spend the, like, I want to brag about them, but I know that this, um, <laughs> people have other things to do with their life, but. <laughs> I do, I understand. It is like, but like you know. to be, to be able to go into these spaces and work with these people who are, you know, incredibly inspiring, not only as, creators and people getting things done but then to get to play in these worlds and like i mean i'm gonna to do stuff in that room like like the belching stuff that i've done um <laughs> and discovering a talent that i didn't realize i mean i knew i had but didn't realize it was going to have any value and be delighting <laughs> delightful to as many people as it has been but like you know that that, that that's part of the landscape oh and that gosh. you know i don't know it's uh, it's it's the best. It's just the yeah. best, and um, yeah. and here. and and so are you. You. <laughs> there's <laughs> right my you. there's my yeah. segue. I'll tell you one thing that was really helpful for me. Um, this is a sidebar through my through my producing classes. I took a, a a class on internet marketing, 
And I thought it was going to help me like sort of invigorate, do a bunch of things. And it did, but it to in a totally different way. And um, it was, uh, the assignment was to blog three times a week. And I was like, blogging is still a thing. But um, on my website, that was where I did it. And like, it, it was so instructive and helpful to, uh, to have that space, especially while I was in Australia, but then like processing, I stumbled into a thing um, that a couple people have reached out to me for private lessons in dealing with that I, uh, about artistic injury. So the idea of, of uh, I think I well, may have talked about that in one of our sessions at one point or another, but that, but of, of a, a different kind of, of, um, you know, that, that feeling of loss or that, that, that confidence loss, um, and then finding your way back. And, and, you know, for me, it's, it's using improv and play to find a way out. You know, I think that was, that was Sherry's instruction for me after I, you know, took my hit. Um, yeah. but it's, uh, you know, the, the blogging, uh, element of it was a real surprise and a real gift. And it helped me generate it helped me write in a way that it gave me a reason to write and sometimes as a as a deadline motivated person like my auditions I always turn in within the last hour of when they're due like it's the same kind of a thing and I I think that um you know if, if you're if you're looking for a reason and not like you don't have plenty of things already on your plate but I've I've a I'll subscribe to your blog and two like a and two uh, I also a and two and two. That is such a drug thing. Right a, there. I'll totally subscribe to your blog. Two, I forgot what A was, but C, uh, I, I'm I'm already subscribed. And D, I started writing it, except for you mentioned Phil. So going back to two, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, oh, the yes, greatest yes, fun. Yes, I anyway. love it. Awesome. I'll let you go. Thank you so much, Serena. This was such Thank a joy. Thank you so much, Kef. It was a pleasure. pleasure More man. soon. I mean, it doesn't have to be recorded. We can actually just hang out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's make it happen. Wonderful. It. And uh, and thank you, audience, for listening. And there'll be more coming soon. Peace. This has been All Over VoiceOver with Kif VH, produced by Werewolf Therewolf. Please consider giving the show a positive rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Look, I know I keep asking for a review, but if you found just one piece of info from me or my guests helpful, please share that with me and share it and help grow our VO community. Feel free to catch up with me on Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse, or Vero at KiffVH, or hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, it's uh, Kiff Fan and Just search for Kiff. We probably know a couple of the same people. And check out my website, www.kiffvh.com, for my reels, updates, and to reach out to me directly for coaching or appearances. Uh... Claim victory and depart the field. Taxi? Taxi? Ah. I guess I gotta walk from here.